It's the Diet Mountain Dew Mississippi River Rumble, presented by Power Pole. Well, here we go. Get ready for a wild one. The sixth stop on the Bassmaster Elite Series 2013. In terms of weather, like so many stops in this 2013 season, Mother Nature has been extreme in every sense of the word. Here it's been rain and storms, storms each and every day. Winds gusting to 50 miles an hour, trees uprooted, flooding, flash flood warnings all through it. We're going to talk to Dave Mercer, actually giving his report of what was happening at the takeoff during one of our days of competition. Here we go, this is the Bassmaster Elite Series Mississippi River Rumble, and I tell you, a river has moved. The river's right here at the boat ramp. You look at how that water, how much water is streaming down there. We basically have a river happening here. But this system is rolling through here, and as you can see, these clouds are absolutely, this storm is coming, and look at the wind that we have blasting through here right now. The official call is we are in delay. We are delayed here right now. Anglers on standby, this is supposed to blow through. This is some extreme, extreme weather here on the Bassmaster Elite Series. That was Dave Mercer, the MC for all the Bassmaster Elite Series events, giving us a real taste of what it's been like this week in La Crosse, Wisconsin, on the Upper Mississippi, all season long, Mark Zona. We've been the people, the only place in the country that's getting hammered by awful weather. But these guys are not only the best in the world at catching fish, they're the best at dealing with adversity, and we're watching them do it here. And we're fixing to get hit yeah, again here way. right behind more us. And here's the amazing thing about the Mississippi River, from really from La Crosse all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, it changes by the second. When you get weather, other systems coming in, well, you can fast forward that and you need to adapt. But if you really look at last year here in La Crosse, what happened was it was some of the most visually stunning fish catches we have ever seen on the Bassmaster Elite Series. But if you're going to win this tournament this year, you need to change with the weather. Yeah, such wild weather this year. Let's look back to 2012 mm. when it was just about perfect and the visual effects of what we were seeing was powerful. Todd Faircloth out there finding something very special. And this tournament was dominated with topwater frogs. You rarely see that throughout the country. And guys were not catching Tommy Sanders two or three. They were catching 40 to 50 on a topwater bait. Yeah, Todd Faircloth right there. A spot that looked much like any other place in the backwater areas of this upper Mississippi River. But he had those special elements there that allowed him to secure an all-important tough victory on the upper Mississippi. And on the other hand, Aaron Martin started that final day just seven ounces behind Todd Faircloth, but a completely different look to his Doing fishing. Doing something totally different. Light line, and on that final day, Aaron Martin's lost touch with his bigger fish. With that, Aaron Martin's lost the title. Back to 2013, the story of this tournament so far. Day one and two leader Brandon Polinick on his way to blowing it out, on his way to clinching his second Bassmaster Elite Series win, felled by an unfortunate disqualification after the weigh-in on day two. Five fish, 18 pounds, four ounces. Day one went really well. Um, after a slow practice, things came together on day one. Um, I had a plan of targeting smallmouth and largemouth, and I caught four giant smallmouth, um, and then caught one good largemouth. And so I had a lot of confidence going into day two. Starting out in the morning, in the first 30 minutes of the second day, I lost my first five fish that I hooked. Oh, big one. Oh, gosh, dang it. Oh, it just came off again. There we go. Three, gone, like that. There we go. Just came off. Another one right there, gone. I was devastated because I thought that that might be the only bites I got that day. After that, I made an adjustment. Um, I was at a very low at that point. Made an adjustment and I started to catch them. Get in here. Woo! Give me some. We got one in the boat. There we go. Get in the boat. Bam! That's a big one. Look at that thing. Bam! That is a monster. Oh my gosh! Woohoo! That's the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught on this river. I made one more move back to my starting spot, uh, which I believed was in Wisconsin. I knew my other spot was in Minnesota, but I ran across the main river channel to the other side of the bank, uh, where I believed was in Wisconsin, and I, I ended up coaling there one time and came to weigh-ins, and I had a little over 19 pounds. 19 pounds! I left the weigh-in site thinking that this was mine to win. 10 o'clock at night, I get a call from the bass officials 
saying that I've been protested. At first I had to question them because I had no idea what they were talking about. I felt like I never did anything wrong. And as we looked into it, we studied the maps, looked at where I was, and I happened to be 100 yards south of where the state border between Minnesota and Wisconsin turns out of the main river channel and runs the east channel. Um, and I was just 100 yards south of that, had no idea. And they said, you know, okay, we're gonna talk about it um, and then we'll call you back. And so I, I sat there for an hour. I don't think I moved. I sat in the chair in my hotel room um, and just sat there and stared at the map. It was so heartbreaking and devastating. I was, I was literally emotionless. I could have already maintained a lead of probably about five pounds without coaling ever. I didn't know what day three and day four would hold, so I wanted to catch as much weight as possible. Um, but once I knew that I had over 18 to 19 pounds, I didn't want to beat on them too bad. Um, and that's when I left them. But it, you know, at that point, once you coal one time in Minnesota, it's game over. So my second day's catch was disqualified and that uh, made me miss the cut for the third day and uh, lost a few dollars and lost a uh, shot at the classic. And I'd need a win bad because I'm so far down in the points that I can't make the classic unless I win an event. And so I thought this was mine to have. Let's hear it for your leader, Brandon Polinick, looking for a second elite series of victory. You know, I think that Bass made the right decision with what information they had. You know, the disqualification, I mean, that's a decision that they had to make. I would have liked to have seen, you know, a lesser penalty, but I don't believe that they made a wrong decision. You know, I believe that they did what they needed to do, and it wasn't their fault, you know. It wasn't something that they wanted to do. They didn't want to disqualify me. They just had to because it has to be an even playing field for everybody. Well, that's what you do. You get in the truck, you try to shake it off, you go on down the road. Two more events left in the season for Brandon Polinick. He's going to have to win one of them to make it to the Classic. And you might not say this about everyone, Mark Zona, but about him, I think he's a guy who's capable of doing. He's tough enough, resilient enough, and good enough. Absolutely. You know, I fished here 15 years ago, and, and what I thought of that law, the no-call law, is exactly what I think now. It's the most absurd thing I have ever heard in all of the outdoors. And the best way to put it, it is outdated. It is misdirected, and you might want to tell some of the game and fish to come and join us here in 2013. That being said, Brandon Polinick was a true professional throughout. Stay with us. We're going to bring you right up to date in this tournament. Aaron Martins, a year afterwards, back in charge in the lead when we come back. The Bass Master Elite Series, Diet Mountain Dew, Mississippi River Rumble, presented by Power Pole, is brought to you by Toyota. Minn Kota. Evan Williams Bourbon. And by Yamaha. Diet Mountain Dew Mississippi River Rumble presented by Power Pole Bassmaster Elite Series. A couple of big stories here through the first part of this tournament. That's one of them right there from day one and every single day, huge storms to start the day. And here was a big storm created by Brandon Polinick. It was, Brandon Polinick was annihilating this tournament almost solely on smallmouth, which you don't see a lot this time of year, but that was all wiped away after the day two weigh-in. Okay, how did it happen? Well, for a look at that, let's take a look at our Bassmaster Rules of the River presented by Skeeter. Mississippi River, of course, runs down the border between Minnesota and Wisconsin. In the state of Minnesota, it is illegal to cull fish or to lose the smallest fish in your five fish limit and put a larger one in in its place. That disqualification based on Minnesota law wiped the tournament out for Brandon Pollock. It did, and other anglers, they were able to shine. Tommy Biffle would move all the way up to second place, and Aaron Martins, he would be your Carhartt Big Bass leader, four pounds, 15 ounces. But that's not it, Tommy Sanders. Aaron Martins would then take the lead. 
Okay, after all of that action, here are the 12. The 12 who will seek the championship on the final day, led, of course, by Aaron Martins, just ounces ahead of Tommy Biffle, Cruz, Card, Rumbanis, and the rest, giving chase. Our Yamaha official lay of the lake map right here. Pool 7, 8, and 9 in the upper Mississippi. This is not the big, wide, rolling Mississippi down south. This is a place with bluffs, with sloughs, tributaries, uh, backwaters, deep water. It's got everything and a lot of ways to catch them, Mark It Zona. is the perfect largemouth and smallmouth bass environment for a river system. And here, early in our takeoff on the final day, Aaron Martins has been in this spot before. He was absolutely waylaying them when we were here last year, looking for redemption this time around. Oh, here we go again. I wish, I wish they were stacked like they were last year. I wish. I thought them so stacked last year, that third day. Ugh. Oh, he's talking about last year and last year. Not a good memory for him. Started just seven ounces behind Todd Faircloth in a great place, he thought. But he couldn't get it done. Couldn't close the deal. Second place is something he is not interested in here. His history with second place is formidable. 12 second place finishes, including four second place spots in the Bassmaster Classic. It's hard to take second in these big tournaments. It's hard to get in that position to win. So seconds hurt a little bit. I've had seconds last year, this year. Yeah, I mean, I don't like to say first place loser, but that's kind of what you feel like. But you're happy you got second, but it really is. You really went first, bad. I mean, I mean you know, a race car driver, he remembers second, I mean, everything's first. Got a five pounder on this in practice. I haven't thrown it since. Kind of how it always goes for me. We gotta pull up on the right spot today, otherwise we're gonna be second or something again, third, fourth. Gotta keep moving around. And I want to go back to my spot, too, because that could put out a nice one still. Here's the amazing thing. Aaron Martin's fishing literally within 100 yards of where he caught him last year, and he has been relying almost solely on a six-inch fat robo-worm the entire Something very strange for this stretch of the river, but the one thing Aaron Martin said, I am catching a lot of bass each day of this event. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's about how big they are there. There's a whole bunch of them. I think there's a bunch. Aaron Martins, and that is just the start he wanted on this final day of competition. He holds on to the lead. Now to go to the man who won it on the final day last year, Texan Todd Faircloth. And in 2012, Todd Faircloth went to a place, one of these flats, many flats that are out here, of course, permanent flats because it's now navigational pools instead of a free-flowing river. And Todd Faircloth did a number on the field on that final day, and he's headed for a place that looks similar. But this was a different river system last year. We were in a full-blown summer pattern. It is not that case this time around. Number one, it was freezing up here about three weeks ago. Number two, with all of this rain, remember all that duck work last year, all that matted vegetation? There's not as much of it this time around. And throughout this week of competition, a lot of our anglers found their fish still scattered out. Some fish spawning, protect and fry. Todd Faircloth, one of those anglers early on Championship Sunday, getting in a little wad of them and definitely putting a solid limit in the boat early. We are in the middle of an impressive play early in the day by Todd Faircloth, starting in ninth place, starting six pounds behind our leader, but he is making up massive ground right now, putting a limit in the boat. So now, early on on this final day, it's Todd Faircloth completely turning the leaderboard upside down. There you see him with the three and a half pound lead ahead of our former leader, Aaron Martin. So big changes in the Diet Mountain Dew Mississippi River Rumble. What's coming next? Diet Mountain Dew Mississippi River Rumble presented by Power Pole. Sixth stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. There's the guy who started this final championship day with the lead, Aaron Martins. You're following it here and you're following it on Bassmaster.com. Also catch us on Twitter, hashtag Bassmaster. Lots of ways to enjoy all this coverage. And the man trying to run Aaron down is Tommy Biffle. Just started seven ounces back and he's got a special place to start his day. Exactly. Call him hashtag sneaky Tommy Sanders. And what Tommy Biffle has done is use this spot sparingly. He found it really out of desperation throughout the practice rounds, and he has a ton of confidence in it. Not with smallmouth. I've won supposed to be smallmouth tournaments with largemouth. 
So uh, this is kind of the opposite. This is a, supposed to be a large mouth tournament, but I'm gonna win it with small mouth. You're gonna win, aren't you? I think so. You know, you don't feel like that very often, but uh, I mean, if you catch as many as I'm catching, I better win it. And really, it's a very featureless spot. If you see that little patch of slick water that Biffle's throwing at, really all it is is a little sand depression. Later in the show, we're going to dial you in on everything this spot has to offer. One hit it right there. That's exactly the reason you don't throw a rattle trap right there, folks. That fish, I would have caught him on my bug. I'm sorry, but that was brutal right there. Tommy Biffle really has got to this final day on one primary bait. He's been throwing a Biffle bug with a hard head. Really, Tommy Biffle has made a career on that bait in the last few years. He's going to dial us in exactly what he's been doing with it. Yeah, that's the only one I've thrown. It's green pumpkin, and then I've taken a orange dipping dye marker. The crawdads are green pumpkin and orange on their pinchers and uh, put that little bit of orange on it. And the other day, that was the key. See how that orange lights up in the water? First day I caught them on my silver one that I always catch them on. And I had a live well full of pinchers and they were just as pretty green pumpkin and orange as you could ask for. And I got thinking about it and hadn't fished very long that second day. And I got down there and got one and fixed it up and I flipped my silver bug in the bush right there. When I stood up, I flipped that one in the same bush and caught one that flip. So uh, I've been using it ever since and it's just like kind of like flipping a switch, you know, you got the right color. Uh, I probably caught 50 to 60 yesterday. So uh, you know you got the right color when they're biting it like that. And too, I've caught everything, walleye, pike, catfish, drum. Ah, uh -huh, this is one. Better one. Dang! Dang it. I think if that had been one of those other lures he was just talking about. Uh, you might want to pick that rattle trap back up. <laughs> so much waited, okay. Well, okay, this magic spot now, previous days he's been hiding this place from 50 anglers, from 100 anglers. This is actually the first time he's ever started here first thing. Exactly, things going very slow. Now out to Brandon Card, our reigning Rookie of the Year champion. Brandon Card said one thing after the first three days of competition, he is catching a ton. Every morning I'm probably catching 20 fish in the first hour, maybe two hours. Go! Horrible boat flip. Come get you some of that. This place, this river has so many fish, it's unbelievable. I can't tell how big he is. <sighs> if you're pulling the right area, you can like literally whack 20 to 30 fish in one or two hours. There he is. That's a good one there. Yeah. Yeah, bass. That's what I'm talking about. Brandon Card going through numbers of fish, and that's what guys like him love to do. Obviously thriving here on the upper Mississippi. Another guy doing very, very well. Starts this day six pounds back is Fred Rumbanis, originally from California. Very, very talented in a topwater context. And it was awesome looking at the deck of his boat. Ten frogs lined up, a furbit, shad walker, a spro frog. The one thing that Rambana said was, you have to commit to it. It's just like fishing a swim bait. When you do, you will catch quality. Well, it was the frog he committed to it for his last win with the Bassmaster Elite oh, Series, there. the Carolina Clash on Lake Murray in South Carolina. I see it smell. Oh, no, it's not about fish. Oh, man! Woo! Whoa! <laughs> I got sugar! <laughs> I got her! <laughs> oh, isn't that sweet? He caught sugar Good. right there, Tommy Good Sanders. Exactly. And he said the main key to frog fishing, especially on the Mississippi River in Lacrosse, 
you have to cover water. You lock that thing in your hand all day long and just cover water. He said the great thing about all of these flats on the Mississippi, when you get around them, the largemouth will absolutely let you know. Oh, get out of here. That was such an awesome blow up, dude. Or is it? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love it. Does not get any better than this right here, guys. This is crazy fun. They're biting, they're chewing, the sun's out. We just made a good three pounder. Good results for Fred Rumbanis on this final day. John Cruz has been having a terrific tournament here on the upper Mississippi, starting this day in third place. He feels great about his practice here. He said he didn't look at anything he looked at last year because he says rivers change daily, not just year to year. Exactly, and this river this week has really changed uh, minutely, Tommy Sanders. And John Cruz fishing in the Goose Island area, one of the only survivors fishing in that area throughout the week. And he said the number one key is to see it right there mixtures of grass. Wherever you'd have a mixture of grass, well, you'd have bass just like this. That's how you start out. Nice, nice three pounder right there. Smoked the old Spro Frog. I hadn't been able to put four good days together and that's what you got to do against this, this crew is you've got to put four good strong days together to have a shot at winning and I hadn't been able to do that if I had uh, you know, I don't know if last uh, yesterday was a little weak, you know, for, for being able to win because those guys have a couple pounds on me, but, uh, you know, anything can happen. I, I feel like that I'm in the areas that I could catch multiple four-pounders potentially, and if that happens, then who knows what I could catch. That'll work. Yeah, we, th this year there's been a bunch of guys that come out of nowhere, that come out of the middle of the pack. Uh, you know, I mean, you had, you had, uh, I came from like, you know, down in the lower part in the top 12 and, and, and ended up third at Falcon. Um, you know, we had Skeet come from nowhere win. Uh, it just, that seems like what it's, what's happening this year. So being that I'm a little bit higher, it gives me a little bit better chance to, to move up. Game time, game time, baby. Whew. That's what I'm talking about. That's how you catch up, right there, right there. Yes, you are my friend. There's a dead go stud. John Cruz really, really going to work hard here from third place. He's moving all the way up to the top spot. So many changes on the leaderboard today. Aaron Martin started with the lead. He's down in fourth place and Cruz cruising on right now. Todd Faircloth, last year's champion, trying to defend, and Tommy Biffle definitely right in there with the leaders at this point. Watching John Cruz here, it hasn't been about the top water all week long, but today, the final day, that's what it's all been about. Is there more to come? We will see. The Bassmaster Elite Series, Diet Mountain Dew, Mississippi River Rumble, presented by Power Pole, is brought to you by Triton Boats, Nitro, and by Abu Garcia. Stop number six for the season on the Bassmaster Elite Series, Diet Mountain Dew, Mississippi River Rumble. We're here in the upper Mississippi. Presented by Power Pole, lacrosse is our host city, and there, big changes continue to happen on our leaderboard. John Cruz jumps into first place, and our leader, Aaron Martins, drops all the way down to fourth. Starting this day in sixth place, trying to make a big, big noise, is the 2004 Bassmaster Classic champion, Takahiro Amore. Talk with five wins, including that classic. Would love to add this one to his resume. Have not seen talk for, ooh, miss one right there on the frog. Tommy Sanders, what do you do then? <laughs> you throw right back in there, boy. Gah. 
I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's, it's a little party girl. <laughs> yes, it is. It's exactly that. One of the things uh, another angler in our top six said, John Cruz, he said when these fish would finally decide to hit that frog, some of the most explosive strikes they have ever seen. Even, even a two to three pound fish absolutely explode on it. Well, just like last year, just some incredible pictures when these guys are fishing this way. And Taka Hero in this top 12 here having his best tournament. This will be his best finish of the year. Although it's been a good year, he's made four of six cuts so far. So Takahiro Mori looking good, but still not quite catching up to the leaders at this point. Also the case for Brandon Card, currently in sixth place. He started the day six pounds back. Of course, he was last year's the 2012 Bassmaster Rookie of the Year. 2012 Bassmaster Elite Series Rookie of the Year, Brandon Card. I'm coming off Rookie of the Year. You know, I had an awesome season last year. Started out this year with two top tens, and I was just on top of the world. And then I had three really bad tournaments. I had a 50-something, then I had two back-to-back -back 90th place finishes. So after that, I was just, my confidence was down. So having this good tournament, it really boosts my confidence back up. If I could win this tournament, that'd be huge. Be, it'd be life changing. There he is. <sighs> Boom. I think, I think he'll help. Nice little frog fish. Up and down season definitely for Brandon Card, but this is one of his up ones here. Exactly, we're gonna get out with John Cruz. You see what Brandon Card is doing. John Cruz fishing a frog, really fishing this stretch of the Mississippi River exactly the way you're supposed to. When I come up here, this place is known for swim jig, frog, and flipping. And uh, that's what I did last year, had a good event, didn't make the cut, but I had, a, I think, a top 20, and so I, I went, with the same mind frame to, to do it again, uh, and I was able to find some areas that, that are holding some fish. That's what I'm talking about. pushing four. Talk about getting your heart rate up. That'll do it right there. Does it for him, does it for us as well. First talk here on Mori and now John Cruz. Some great, great pictures. That's a, a fun thing to watch, but not exactly the way this tournament has been dominated. Well, it's been dominated by Tommy Biffle on really one primary spot. We're gonna take a look at that right now with our Humminbird advanced view. And this is the spot that Tommy Biffle has hid from the rest of the field all week long. And if you look at this, that current comes from upstream and it rolls downstream and really the bottom is featureless. One to two feet of water, just a little sand point with a flat around it. But he would take that little biffle bug with a hard head and there was a three to four foot depression that those bigger small mouth would load up in. And when he'd run that biffle bug through there, as long as he got one small mouth to ignite, he would usually get one or two quality bites after that. That spot you just described, Mark Zona, has been the money spot for Tommy Biffle, although you don't always find him there. He's been kind of stealthy about this place. He values it a lot. Got him on the phone. Let's ask him why he's not there right now. Tommy, you've had a magic sandbar that you've caught some massive smallmouth this week. So far this morning, they have not turned on yet for you. Do you feel they're still there or that they've completely moved? Yeah, I, th I think they're still there or they're around there or it's an afternoon spot. Every time it's been good, it's been in the afternoon. And this morning, I was hoping that uh, I would, you know, run down there and catch me 18 pounds. But uh, they weren't there this morning. I caught a little limit of smallmouth. And, and uh, you know, I'm going to save about noon and go back. I came back up here to my flipping fish. Just, uh, I could only throw it one spot so long. So, uh, trying to save second place right now. Well, Tommy, uh your success in the past decade has come either close to home, the Arkansas River or the Grand River system there in Oklahoma, or up here in the northern tier of states. 
Your last time you won an event on the Bassmaster Elite Series, you prepared by mowing your yard on the day the day before the tournament started. I'm thinking you prepared a little harder for this one. Is that right? Yeah, I worked a little bit harder at this one, but uh, you know, I really thought I had a good shot, and still think I've got a good shot. It's not over, but uh, they hurt my feelings this morning when they didn't show up and and let me catch a bunch of big ones. But you know how that you know how that goes. Now, we know how that goes, and we also know you're right about that. There's plenty more fishing yet to come on this day. Good luck to you, Tommy Biffle. Okay, thank you, Tommy. <clears throat> that might help. <clears throat> That'll help. <clears throat> Good keeper there for Tommy Biffle, and that one right there is kind of like house money because that's not even from his his main spot this place he's sort of saving to load up a little later on today meanwhile Aaron Martin started the day with the lead a small lead but it's been slow for him Aaron Martin's fishing right out in the middle now of the Black River and you could tell after the day three weigh in Aaron had a little tone about him that he was worried he was running out of fish so far here on Championship Sunday Aaron Martin's needs to put a good one in the boat or he'll be in the same spot he was in last year Gosh, man, way too long, way too long catching fish. But we'll take a two pounder, right? That's four, <clears throat> well actually two, because we got two that weigh about a pound and a quarter, which I'm not even counting those. They have to go, it's a start, right? I mean, the guy keeps the momentum going. It's been a lot more f quicker than me. Imagine catching 40 the first day and 40 the second day and down to 15 yesterday. And then now look at, geez, four. What is going on? I would love to pull up on one of my spots and just have them be stacked like they were two days ago. It's critical. I mean, if I, if I would have just took one fish from one of my days out, I, I wouldn't be leading it probably. So each day I've had one that stands out, which is really weird. I've had, you know, 15 fish and three of them really stand out for the rest of them. Each day I've had one. Yesterday I had one that was 415, and the first day I had one a little over four. So I've, each day I've had one of those really nice four pounders, you know, critical. Aaron Martin's trying to get something going here on the final day. Martin's is not out of the conversation as far as Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year either. Look at that season he's had. Phenomenal, with the exception of event number one. 85th place, throw that one out, and he's running away with the race. Exactly right. You're seeing a little adjustment right here, going to a three-quarter ounce football jig and igniting a school. And that's what makes Aaron special. Just little attention to detail, Tommy. A lot of people talk about Aaron Martin's second place finishes like it's a bad thing. It's absolutely unbelievable. And Aaron Martin's making a big move here right now. Yeah, that will help. Choked it, choked it. Dude, if they're there, it's lights out. Game over. If they're there like they are, they're... Oh, it's a three. Woohoo! Thank you, Lord! Bassmaster Elite Series event number six of eight for the regular season. The Diet Mountain Dew Mississippi River Rumble presented by PowerPole. We're out of La Crosse, Wisconsin on the upper Mississippi. Follow us on Twitter, hashtag Bassmaster. We have got a lot to follow as we head toward the end of this tournament. This is the final championship day and the man who started with the lead, although by ounces, is now back in the lead again by ounces. Aaron Martins is on top, Tommy Biffle right behind him, John Cruz, Todd Faircloth among the 12 who are out there also fishing is Fred Rumbanis, who's missed the cut here last year, so obviously he's figured out something pretty important. Yeah, really two things, cover a ton of water and let them show themselves. Oh, you see that? Oh! We got one, we got one that boiled on it, or tried to eat it right there, let's see. Man. Come on, don't do that. Let's get right here. Let's see if I 
get this one beat real quick. Oh, it boiled right there. Look at that. It wants it. <laughs> he wanted it, didn't he? You know what? That was pretty awesome, wasn't it? Man, I hooked him good. Look at all these fish so good. It was awesome. We don't always get to see it like that, but what a treat when you get to see these guys, the best in the world, catch them on top waters. Fred Rumbanis trying to get into the top tier here. Back over to Aaron Martins, an up and down day for him. Exactly, Aaron Martins went on a major flurry early today, but still missing that one big bite. In the area he's fishing the Black River, right here in La Crosse, well, there's not a lot of grass. There's not a lot of shallow flats. Those fish have to relate to little subtleties. Aaron Martin's catching them seven to 13 feet of water, just like he did last year. But Aaron yeah. Martin's getting very frustrated without having that big bite. It might, it might be the boat, I don't know, man. I usually keep going and going and catch like 40 in a row. And the way they're biting is, I mean, they're biting everywhere. It's like, oh, I was 20, 30 feet apart on the cast and they're chewing it. I don't know if it's the boats or what. Uh, it could be, because we started catching before they pulled up to us. It's hard to say. It's a waste of time, dude. I don't need to be doing this right now. Aaron Martin's obviously agitated and getting more so with each passing minute now. And this, this day's kind of boiling down to two basic different philosophies. It really is. It's turned into the jig against the frog yep. tournament right now. And the scary thing about all your frog fishermen out there, Cruz, Rumbanis, these guys are catching great quality on this final day. Watch out, boys. Watch out. Another great catch. The hits just keep coming. That one I think we're going to have to call it the Evan Williams Bourbon Shot of the Day. No, Tommy Sanders, it's the Shot of the Day of the Week. Well, coming down to the wire, things getting tighter and tighter on this final championship day. This could be one of these events where the final decision, the right one, is going to produce our winner. You know, we got to make a move and make something happen. The Bassmaster Elite Series, Diet Mountain Dew, Mississippi River Rumble, presented by Power Pole, is brought to you by Toyota, Bass Pro Shops, Humminbird, and by Mercury. What a great fishery, the upper Mississippi. Hats off to the uh, DNR here in Wisconsin. Do their best to maintain this habitat, keep it like it was when it was free flowing through here as we watch Tommy Biffle in that tight, tight race. The top three guys so very close within two pounds on this last day. Biffle's had a very, very weird day. He relied on this spot. He said he was going to knock their lights out early. That was not the case. Went up, flipped a limit of largemouth. Right now, Tommy Biffle back on his primary spot, and it is not happening. Well, Few hours left in this tournament. Tommy Biffle needs to do something and do something fast. Can't make them be here, can I? I'd say they moved. Moved on the day they needed to stay. Ain't no telling where they went. On down the river, I imagine. I hadn't seen them in that ditch any. 
and they got me nervous now. Well, this was going to be the place where he would load up, win the tournament, not working out that way. Well, his exact words were, he's going to, in about 10 casts, catch 18 to 20 pounds and destroy Aaron Martin's dreams of winning this tournament. And right here is the biggest decision we've seen of the entire event with Tommy Biffle. Lifting his power poles up, and he's going to go to an area right here. Now, check this out. He has not fished the entire tournament. And that's what makes a veteran a veteran, making a call like this literally in the last hour of the event. You know, we got to make a move and make something happen. We've we've wasted a lot of time today on that spot, and I just I just don't believe they're there now. I don't believe they're coming today. So we came over here to this current point. Real good move at the right time. We got 30 minutes left. Right there, I ought to catch one. Well, at 56, Tommy Biffle's been around this game a long, long time. Do you think he's going to regret this move? He, he's not going to regret it at all. He's only got 30 minutes left. You just heard him say that. What happens is what happens, win or lose. There's one. That's the one we need. Come on, buddy. Yes! That'll help. That's a nice, big, pretty one. That will work. He's close to four. Gonna make a run at him now. That's a good three something. And that right there, one of the strongest moves we've seen on a final day. Not quitting on your first spot, quitting on your first and second area and going somewhere you've not been the entire event. That's some kind of move. One last second move from Tommy Biffle that could have made the difference. We're about to find out. Weigh in's coming up. How about it? Our Diet Mountain Dew breakthrough move? We thought earlier today it would be this man, John Cruz. <laughs> game time, game time, baby. Woo. John Cruz went on an absolute tear for the better side of about an hour and a half. Get in this boat! Putting good fish after good fish in the boat. Yes. John Cruz with an unbelievable morning, but it was this move right here by Tommy Biffle giving up on his primary area. Mm -hmm. You know, we gotta make a move and make something happen. That bold move by Tommy Biffle is our Diet Mountain Dew breakthrough yes. move. Mm. Diet Mountain Dew, yeah, it tastes that good. You know, we got to make a move and make something happen. Did the move work? A big crowd is gathered here in Lacrosse. Great crowds every day, but today is special. Today, they're going to find out who wins this important event. From Jasper, Texas, give me a little love for Todd Faircloth. Needs 12 pounds, 4 ounces in his drive to once again claim the Mississippi River Rumble. 14-13, a brand new leader. Once again, Todd Faircloth claims the lead at the Mississippi River Rumble. Looking for 13-11, 16 pounds, six ounces. John Cruz crushes them on the final day at the Diet Mountain Dew Mississippi River Rumble presented by Power Pole. Looking for 12 pounds, 16 pounds, 13 ounces, a brand new leader in Tommy Biffle. Has his eyes on win number seven with 64 pounds, two ounces. Give me a little love for Tommy Biffle. Is standing right here, which one is it? Started with 47, 12, looking for 16 pounds, seven ounces to take the lead. 16-6 to tie. 13 pounds, 15 ounces. Tommy Biffle has done it. The fifth man coming. He owns the Diet Mountain Dew Mississippi River Rumble presented by Powerful. 
Lacrosse, do it right. Make some noise for your 2013 Mississippi River Rumble champion, Tommy Biffle. Let's hear it one time for our champion of the Diet Mountain Dew Mississippi River Rumble, presented by Power Bowl. This man, Tommy Biffle. I don't know if it's been mentioned, maybe it has, but I don't know if there's records for greatest improvement in a tournament one year to the next, but man, you finished way down there last time. How do you engineer a comeback in, in broad terms like the one you did this week? Well, I didn't like it down there where I was last year, so. Uh, it's not good. Last year, you know, this river has so much water, so much backwater. Uh, I tried to fish two pools last year. This year I decided when I came, I would just fish one pool and figure out how to catch them in it. So uh, that's what I did. I, and you know, I fished what I like to fish. I flipped them and caught them on the bug and the hard head. Do me a favor, if you're to close your eyes, describe what was going on under the water on that one special spot. On the special spot, it was the end of an island and the current would come around the corner. And that current over the years had made a little old ditch and a sandbar on both sides and it was two, two and a half foot deep on the sides and three or four feet deep in the ditch. I would get on the downstream yeah. side, throw up, bring that bug and hard head down and let it fall over the ditch and they were laying in that ditch. And I think that's, that was the only thing yeah. there to, for them to be on. And the winner of the Diet Mountain Dew Mississippi River Rumble presented by Power Bowl one more time for Tommy Biffle.